Shall we pray? Our internal rock of ages, we thank you, we bless you. We give you all the glory because you are the Lord. Thank you for your faithfulness that changeth not because you are our Father. We know you change it not. If only we can trust and obey you, you'll be there for us. Father, help us to trust you. Help us to obey you. Help us to walk in your light that you continually be a help unto us also. Father, we want you to speak to us today. And let the word have a root. Let it, be, let it be established in us. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, let there be more interpretation even as we go to the glory of your kingdom. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Hallelujah. God bless us as we have our seats. Um, this morning, the message we have before us is continuity of something God has, God has told us, talked to us about the A's, B's. But today we are talking about the five C's for your Christian race. The five C's for your Christian race. Five C's for your Christian race. And number one says, as a child of God, or even if we are not a child of God, the first A concerns every cross across the board, and that is always consider your ways. Consider your ways. What do I mean consider your ways? Even Jesus Christ, when he was on the cross, at a point he said, Father, why have thou forsaken me? That means he looked around and see that things that used to work well for him before, it's not working as it ought to be. He look around and see that I have never find things difficult as this that I'm going through right now. I never experienced what I'm experiencing right now. Father, what's going on? Are you still with me? That means he was constricting his ways. Is there anything I've done wrong? Why have thou forsaken me? I got chapter 1 from verse 5 to 7. I got chapter 1 from verse 5 to 7. And I may just add 9 if need be. I got chapter 1 from verse 5 to 7. Now, therefore... Thus says the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Consider what? Your ways. He said, you have sown much and bring in little. Ye eat, but ye have not enough. Ye drink, but ye are not filled with drink. Ye clothe you, but there's not warm. That he that earneth wages, earneth wages to put it in the bag with holes. Seven. Thus says the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Just let's see 9, verse 9 too. You look for much, and lo, it came to little. And when you brought it home, I did blow, I did blow upon it. Why, said the Lord of hosts, because of my house that is in waste. And you run every man into his own house. When things are not going the way you ought to go, that ought to go, or you plan it to be at times, the first thing as a child of God is to consider your ways. Where am I missing it? Have I done anything wrong? Have I done anything that will make God to be far from me? Is there anything? That's why David says, search me. If there be any iniquity in my heart, have you done anything wrong? And even if you are not a child of God, if you consider your life the way your life is going, is it okay for you to think about it? That it's better you give your life to Christ so that you can begin to enjoy or better experience in future to come. If you don't consider your way, you don't even know when to make a U-turn. You don't, make, you don't know when to stop what you are doing. Like, for example, the Bible says in Proverbs 20, verse 20, it says, for a child that calls his parents, it says the light to be taken away in an obs obscure darkness. That means if you find that the moment you need light, the moment you need help, help is just being not coming. Things are not working the way it should be. Then you should post yourself a little bit and consider your ways. What I, do I need to adjust? What do I need to correct? Is there any restriction I need to make? And then you can fix things. Then you can continue. Point number two. When you have considered your ways and you know things are faulty somewhere, then it's, you follow the word of Christ in Matthew eleven twenty eight. That says, come unto me. It says, come unto me, all ye that labor and heavy laden. Even though you are laboring, but things are not going on the way you expect it to be. Oh, you are working so hard. You are doing all that you could do. You are fasting so much. You are going to church every now. You are praying as you ought to be. Or you are trying to please God and things are becoming difficult. He said, come all, call unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden. And I'll give you rest. Come unto me. Jeremiah 3.22. I prefer an LT version. Jeremiah 3.22. 
Say, oh, my children. When he was talking about it, he said, my wayward children, my wayward children, says the Lord, come back to me and I will heal your waywardness. I will heal your wayward heart. Yes, you are coming to the people who reply. You are the God of our God. You are the God. You are the Lord of our God. You are the Lord of our God. What does he say? Even though you are a child of God and you see that things are not going on well, and you suddenly notice that you have missed it somewhere, which is common, which is possible. Even to the level of Jeroviah Tiasia told us a story one day. He said, uh, a senior pastor just called him. One day said, Come and interpret for me, because in Africa, then we, they preach in English, then they interpret in a native language. So when the father saw call him, come and interpret for me, he felt, ah, he told me that I'm interpreting for the general superintendent, the founder of the church. I've been interpreting for a pastor. He said, though he went, but he forcefully, I mean, went through it. But after that moment, he knew things were not well with him anymore. And he repented. He cried to God. He said, God have mercy on me. If I will sin against you tomorrow, take me, away. Take me home today. For to know how serious it was. He said before then, when he's leaving his house, God will have told him, don't go through this road. Go through the other road. And you go through the other road. Every other person that goes through this road, they will come back complaining about traffic or things that did not go well. But God is always working with him. And suddenly he found that those things are not working anymore. So he cried to God. So when things are not working well, what do you do? Jesus said, come unto me. He said, come unto me. And when you call unto him, you are not just coming to show yourself. You'll be able to cry unto him. In Exodus chapter 3, verse 9, the Bible recorded the children of Israel. He said, now their cry has come up unto me. Their cry, that means they are supposed to spend 400 years in the, in the, in the foreign land, in the land of slavery. But God is still looking at them, saying, they are not ready. 400 years, they are not ready. 410, they are not ready. 420 years, they are not ready. I'm not talking of days. Years. When it comes to 430, they now begin to come back to God with their cry. And the Bible records that, now therefore behold, the cry of the children of Israel has come to me. So when you come to him, you cry to him to let him know, I'm going through unpleasant situations. Things are not what's supposed to be. I've been laboring for years. I'm not seeing the result. I'm making money, but I can't have something to show for it. What is going on, God? By the time your prayer, your cry comes on to him, he might be able to see to your case and give you what is needed. And point number three, when you come to him, don't hide anything. Quickly bring it on board. God, I know, I know I have done this wrong. I know this is my fault. The Bible says, Proverbs 20, 13, he said that confesses his sin and forsake them. He that confesses his sin and forsake them shall obtain mercy. Even 1 John 1 verse 9, 1 John 1 verse 9, say, if we, if we that we love him, if we that knows him, we can confess our sins. He is faithful to forgive all our righteousness. He says, if we confess, confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from unrighteousness. If we, that means it's conditional. You can decide to come to him and say, keep quiet. You can decide to come to him and only be crying to him about what you are going through. Not laying down what you have done wrong before him. David came to him, Psalm 51. He said, God, in sin did my mother con conceive me. I know I was born in sin. He said, have mercy on me. I know you might have taken the strength of the Holy Spirit away from me. The bones of my progress must have been broken. But Father, restore all this unto me. He cried unto God. He confessed his shortcomings. But do you know all these years, you see even in marriages, you see in homes, you see between parents and children, instead of admitting that I've done wrong, this is what I've done wrong, I'm so sorry. They say, am I the only one that's doing that? Am I the only one? Is it new? <laughs> we are watching the pastor the other day. <laughs> and it's a true story. It was recorded in the court anyway. The pastor was caught sleeping with uh, his secretary. Was his secretary, right? <laughs> A secretary. So the other secretary, there are two secretaries. Another secretary went and exposed him. So they came to the court, and the person was saying, "The judge, I know this is not new to you. Why? You, why? Are you? Because just said I advise you to step down from this your office of a pastor. You are not a pastor." He said, "What are you talking about? Is this the first time you hear something like this?" He said, "I didn't even get to know about this." He said, "The other secretary now was the one that exposed him. Why did you expose him?" He said he has been sleeping with me and he has promised me that I'll be the only one. 
So when he dumped me, <laughs> so that is not accepting and confessing. And that good, how can you? Uh, he said, when you acknowledge your sins, then you are looking for healing. Proverbs twenty-eight nineteen says, "He that confesses his and forsake them shall obtain mercy." Those conditions must be met. If they are not met, you will not be able to break through. Psalm 32 verse 5 also talks about if we confess God we also in his faithfulness. Forgive us all our sin. I acknowledge my sin to you and my iniquity I have not hidden. I said I will confess my transgressions to the Lord and you forgive the iniquity of my sins. When you confess, when you don't hide your sins anymore before him. You tell him who you are. Father, even in your church, I tell lies. Even this place, Father, I have cheated people. Even here and there, you tell God your shortcoming. Even people that I have not to respect, I did not respect them. I walk away from my parents. And you know, you just mention those things one after the other. And lay before him so that you may obtain mercy. But people just come, that they just talk God is not cruel, as they normally say. God is not cruel. Why will God punish his children? Who told you? Jesus Christ, even the only begotten son on the cross, felt the pain. Say, Father, why have thou forsaken me? That means things are not going all the way you expect to be. He cried to him. And that brings us to number, point number four. Consider delay dangerous. If you check your ways, and you know things are not going all well, it's better you hold it at the right timing. Because the more you don't attack it, or not understanding that delay is dangerous, you might just be carrying it over. Before you know it, five years, ten years, you are still going through the same problem. But the moment you know it is, it is an issue, and you naked yourself before him, God, who am I? What do I have that you don't know? Even before I do anything, you already know. Father, help me. In Hebrews chapter 3, verse 15, he said, today, today, when you hear his voice, harden not your heart as a day of provocation. Today, when you hear, when you get to know that things are not going on well, do not harden your heart. Take steps. Take steps that will bring you to a point of change. The same thing was said in verse 7 to 8 in this same chapter and verse. The same thing. He said, today, when you harden your heart, when you get to know that things are not going on well, quickly make a U-turn. He said, therefore, as the Holy Spirit says, today, if you hear his voice, harden not your heart. Do not harden your heart in the day of rebellion. Do not harden your heart as, as, as in the rebellion in the day of trial in the wilderness. Don't harden your heart. If he tells you you are faulty, if he tells you you are wrong, go and fix it. Go to him. Tell him, God, I'm sorry. God, I've made some mistakes. God, I've disobeyed you. Gonna make a right turn when you told me to make a left turn. How can you help me to fix it? But don't just look at it and say, after all, the right turn I make will take me somewhere. As Brother Hope said the other day, every decision is what? Like a vehicle that will take you to a destination. Whether good destination or bad destination. Every decision is a vehicle. So if you don't look at it that way, God, I enter the wrong bus. You told me to go through this route. But on my own, I choose the wrong vehicle. How can you help me, God? How can you help me? I know, but if you are looking at it, eh, my friend, at least my friend succeeded on this part too. Who told you you are the same destiny with your friend? <laughs> you might not be. You don't have the same assignment, so you won't be marked with the same, with the same as, uh, answer script. So if your friend is succeeding doing the wrong things, you think you are heading towards the same place. Your friend might decide to have is might be decided he's going to might have decided he's going to hell. So if you know that God has exposed some things to you, why you are considering your ways? Why not just quickly let him know that God, at this point in time, I can't hide anything from you anymore. Delay is dangerous. I need to fix it today. He said today when the Holy Spirit show it to you. Don't postpone it to tomorrow. We all see the stickers we, or the slogan that say people who felt they would give their life, life to God at the 99th hour. What happened? They might not even get to that 99th hour. 
They will say, no, I will give my life to, to God when it's 9.30 p.m. Or when, when it's 11.30 p.m. Or when it's 99 hour, you know. You might not even get there because you don't know tomorrow. And that brings us to the, the last point, the fifth point. Choose carefully. Choose what? Carefully. Proverbs 3, verse 5 to 6, give us a bright understanding. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not in your own understanding. That alone settled the whole case. Lean not in your own understanding. That means, oh, my understanding tells me that if I want to buy a car, I should go to dealership and just play smart. You know, I just pick up one car I just want to buy. That's the understanding. My understanding tells me that if only I can get this qualification, I know that I will make this money so much. That's the your understanding. But when you want to choose carefully, God, what is it you have for me? What is it you have for me? I desire to have these things. I desire to have this home. I desire, I remember years ago, I wanted to buy a home. Not quite long when we came into this country. And my own was just that I don't want to put more depth upon myself. No. I don't want to put much depth upon myself. As I, would look, at least as I was looking for old houses. I was driving around with my daughter. Then she was very young. Looking for old houses. But God is looking at me that, no, that's not what you needed. So when I just begin to see the house, I more expensive. I moved, I upgraded to a, a new house, but very small. One car garage. I mean, one car garage. The rooms alone is like, if you put the bed, hardly can it contain the sofa. But I don't care. I don't want to put depth upon my head. I went ahead and, and, and filled the form and did everything. Because I was thinking that's what I needed. But at the same time, I started praying. And all of a sudden, the lady came and she called and said, I'm sorry to announce you, you are not qualified. She was like, for this small house, you are not qualified. I said, keep quiet, madam. Just let it let go. And I tell you, the end of the day, the house that God gave us, if you carry the one we are not qualified for and put it inside, <laughs> it will swallow it up. But my own understanding then is that I don't want to put more depth upon myself. But God knows that that is not what befits me. So your understanding at that can be faulty. You might think you have knowledge. You might think you have power. That suddenly can be power failure. Or oh, you never heard about power failure? Oh, I have techniques to handle this thing. What about there's technical fault? Or oh, you never have a technical fault? We can delay things down. He make it clear. Why should you not depend on your own counsel? Let's see Judges chapter 5 verse 8. Preferably NLT again. Don't choose. F Judges chapter 5 verse 8. It's to encouraging us to know that until when we get to know when Israel choose a new God, when they choose by themselves, that means they are choosing a new God for themselves. When, it, when Israel choose new God, war erupted at the city gate. Yet not a shield or a spear could, see, could be seen among 40,000 warriors of Israel. Anytime you choose your own way, you are choosing a new God for yourself. I don't know whether you get that calculation. If God expects you to worship in this church, let me example. And you felt, no, you are going to New York. And you moved to New York. What happened in New York? You'll be subject to the God that operates in that environment. And you might not know it. Anytime you choose of yourself without asking God about to choose for you, you might find that you are leading to a wrong home. It was President Obama's wife that was jokingly saying one day, he said they were at the gas station. And... Um, they saw one of the ex. And he now said, wow, if you have not married me, you will have been a wife to the uh, gas station attendant. <laughs> and the lady just laughed. Why? Because she knew that marrying me is what made your life to be better. So if you don't marry her, and guess what I can prove to you at this point? There was a point in time that it was her understanding of things about life that make him to progress. There was a time that Obama was just leaving the house, going two, three days, going to Washington from Chicago, not home for some days. And she's becoming so much, I mean, bodysome, it's becoming so bodysome on her. They, their children are still, they are still young. She has to take care of the kids, she has to go to work, take them to school. And she was furious one day, saying, you know what? 
I need to make this man sit at home. But something she composed herself again. What really do I need? Do I need him to stay at home or I need help to take care of things in the house? Say, I need help to take, of, to take care of things of the house. She now decided to bring her mother to live with her. Because she brought her mother to live the, with them, Obama now had the ability to continue his political career. All of a sudden, he contested, he became a president. Backward. If she has decided, you know what? If you want peace in this house, you know how some women will say, <laughs> you ain't going anywhere anymore. If you go, forget this marriage. And if it's a gentle husband like me that's obedient, I'll begin to stay at home. <laughs> Am I not obedient? Why are you laughing? <laughs> so that was saving grace. So that means if Obama has met, married somebody else who is hot tempered, who is so self centered, what will have happened to his political career? So the moment you choose wrong, you are choosing another God that will control your future. And why should you not do this? In 1 Peter 2 verse 9, the Bible says, you are a choosing generation. A peculiar people. You are not the same as others. Others can wake up on money. You know what? I quit. But you can't quit. John chapter 21, Peter wake up on money and say, you know what? I go back fishing. So I came to meet him there. Are you, what are, you doing? are you out of your mind? What are you doing here? Go back. Guess what? Somebody that's not peculiar people might wake up the same way and say, you know what? I go back fishing. What will happen? Nothing. You are a peculiar people. And God, God, has, God is counting on you because why? He has assignment for you in the future. And part of the assignment is John chapter 15 verse 16. When he say, I have chosen you. You didn't choose me. I choose you. I choose you. You didn't choose me. And I appoint you to go, to be able to go and bear fruit for him. So because he wants to go and bear fruit for him, that's why he's expecting that you don't choose any other God that will tell you there's no need to bear fruit. Other gods. Genesis chapter 3. Eve chose another God. Because he told her, did God say you should not? Did God say? I said, yes, God said. He said, don't mind that God. I'm also a God that can show you a better way. And the better way is, if you eat that fruit, you will be like God. You will know evil from good. You will live long like God. You will not die anymore. Eh? So you choose another God. Only to lose the garden of Eden. So whatever thing you are doing, choose carefully. Shall we rise? I don't know which one concerns you this morning. Are you at the beginning where you are still constraining your ways? Where you are still constraining your way, looking at your life? I have been working so much, I have nothing to show for it. When I come into the midst of people, they change their word, they change their topic because they don't want me there. Everywhere I go to seek for business, they quit seek for employment, I meet with a mountain wall like a door. What is your situation? Or do you need at all to come back unto him as a backsliding child of God? He said, oh, we want children of mine. Come back and I'll heal your backsliding. Or do you need to, con to confess your sins to him? Do you need to confess your sins to him? To say, Father, you know what? I've not been faithful. I have not been respectful as it ought to be. I've always been keeping your work far away. I've not been paying the attention you want me to pay for your works. I'm making your work secondary. And you said your work should be first. Father, help me. Or what's the situation you are going through at this moment? Why not just go back to him in prayer? Go back to him in prayer. Go back in prayer. Go back to him in prayer. And nail it down upon the head. So this, here, this is who I am. This is who I am, Father. This is who I am. Maybe you have been choosing with your own knowledge. You know how things work. That's where you feel that's the right way it should be. The Bible says in John chapter 4 verse 13, from verse 13 that was, it said, look at this guy. He decided, say, when I wake up in the morning, I'll go to Kano, go and buy, and bring it to Shokoto to come and sell. I'll pick from Shokoto, I'll go to U.S. to go and sell it. Ah, African food that's selling U.S. He said, look at you. He said, your life. James, 
James 4.13. He said your life is just like a wasteful life that you don't know. It's like a vapor that when it brights in the morning, it can vanish at night. Why not you say, if God permits, if God allow me, if it is the will of God for me, I will do this, I will do that, I will do that. Just talk to him, to the glory of the heavens. And if you need to give your life to him, why not make up your mind this morning? If you are hearing me, wherever you are at home, and you want to give your life to him, you start by coming unto him. Why not come unto him and tell him to accept you? Tell him to accept you. And if you are here in the congregation, why not just wave your hand where you are? If I may need to pray with you, that Jesus might help you and come into you, to the glory of his name. Thank you, blessed Father. We give you all the glory. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In the rock of ages, we thank you for who you are. We say, be that glorified, O God of heaven and earth, in Jesus' name. Thank you for the word you sent to us today. The five seeds that we needed for our Christian journey. Father, help us to always remember them. Help us to make correction where it is dead. Help us not to fail you anymore to the glory of your kingdom. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray.